my life okay. good morning and welcome to another chai and why so today actually i have this formal responsibility to introduce the speaker who actually needs no introduction uh, so today's speaker is professor arnab bhattacharya he joined tifr in 2000 before that he completed his btech in engineering physics from iit bombay and then he went uh, to west for his further studies and today he is going to reinvent the wheel for us so all yours thanks thanks uh in scope are yes yeah. uh indeed so uh, welcome to chai and why welcome all those who are here welcome those who are watching online uh if you are watching online please put your questions and comments in the chat and uh, we will uh, there is somebody looking at the youtube chat so we can take your questions and comments there please feel free to ask lots of questions and comments um okay so i will now share the screen for the benefit of the online audience uh, so just give me a second out here so hopefully that won't bug us does it still work okay so uh today's topic is on wheels right and uh, by the way for those who are joining us for the first time chai and why happens over here on the first sunday of every month third sunday at ruparel college and if a month has a fifth sunday we are online and every time it's always interesting here we have a very complex uh, set for today's play so it's uh, you know we're using only half the stage um and uh, for you here we will have a lot of experiments as well some of these experiments are tough to do we have one or two experiments we can do for the online crowd and you and some are only for you because we just can't do them uh, online so um, sorry online audience you also don't get chai but uh, hopefully you can have some intellectual discussions okay so let's get started no oh, now it's again not working it's okay oh, okay okay so how did you let me ask you how did you come to chai and why today and did anybody come only walking or did somebody somehow whatever mode of transport you used a wheel everybody used a wheel to come here good so you take you know you don't even you didn't think that ah today i'm going to need a wheel because i need to move somewhere i need to go somewhere it's taken for granted and wheels come in all kinds of this is the picture i had on the poster um we released the poster on 15th august which is why i had this in the middle um and uh, there are wheels of all kind uh section of them over here i should say that um, while going through this while doing this i decided that it is getting really complex i will not be covering gears okay gears is probably going to be a completely different chai and why they're just they're so fascinating that we can do a different a completely a full chai and why on it we will try and cover some of the other kinds of wheels at least uh, we'll also not cover threaded wheels uh, those tank wheels we will not cover okay so uh, on that note uh, i should start by saying that i am not an expert in wheels uh i'm not a mechanical engineer nothing of my professional work connects to wheels except i use wheels like all of us do and um, i have basically today's session is all about some interesting observations uh that i have made over the last several years i've asked myself some questions i've tried to find some you know do some reading some interesting things i hope you'll find them interesting as well okay and um, you know the the title of the thing was the first time when i tried to google for wheels um uh, if you go to amazon or to to google and you type in your wheels uh, you get this song called the wheels of the bus go round and round um so that's the first place you encounter wheels these days apparently um uh, then i thought that uh, oh well there must be better books on wheels and of course uh, there are you type in books on wheels uh, you get lots of coloring books on wheels there are hot wheels coloring books on wheels there are uh, coloring books for adults also uh, on wheels and there are uh, you know some wheels for kids and all this there are lots of books for for on wheels so i said hmm this is not what i'm looking at so you type reinventing the wheel 
and you get lots of books on reinventing the wheel as well there are lots of these management books that tell you on on entrepreneurial trends and you know getting customers and there's even a book on cheese and reinventing the wheel so reinventing the wheel also there are uh, lots of books but nothing on the science of a wheel so it, it took me a while and actually there are there are with something i figured out that there are actually some very nice books there's a book by called the, the wheel the invention that drove humanity forward uh, invention and reinvention of the wheel and there are lots of there's a book called nuts and bolts which lists many different inventions one of them is, is the wheel so there are some things and you know you can read much better things than what i can do uh, so what i'm doing is not comprehensive it's just a few observations random observations hopefully uh, i'll make you think okay all right so on that note and also realize that a little knowledge is a dangerous thing so you're warned so let's let's start okay so i'm going to start with a little quiz online audience please put your uh, answers in the chat and otherwise please raise your hand here don't shout we'll try and see so uh, okay all right all right this has come first fine this is not the order in which i thought i had it but anyway uh, how many kinds of you know you've 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 seen wheels everywhere how many kinds of wheels do you see around you how many kinds and uh, you know i mean at the end of it you can see there are there are car wheels and cycle wheels and you know whatever wheels i have some wheels over here uh, you know how many kinds of wheels are there some kinds of wheels are all wheels the same type yeah gears are different so gears are wheels which are which are you know have some teeth on them that you can drive another wheel with it that's a different thing but wheels the typical wheels that we use so there are there are basically wheels that are by themselves right i have one here wheels that are by themselves um, there are so a wheel is something that can turn around an axle so you have something it can turn that's what a wheel is and uh, is a is a car wheel the or a cycle wheel the same as the wheel on a train why so in some cases the two wheels turn together in some cases they can turn on their own okay so those are the two main types of wheels wheel and what are called wheel set a wheel set is two wheels that turn together like train wheel there is a third type of wheel which is a wheel which can turn on its axis as well which is the wheels on your baggage trolleys the caster wheels which you have here out there as well okay so there are basically three types of wheels a wheel a wheel set which is two wheels together or casters which can also each wheel can turn individually okay on another axis so these are basically the types of wheels now let's start at the very beginning and the next question of the quiz is what is the first application of a wheel 5000 you know bc most ancient cultures discovered a wheel discovered a wheel okay for what what were they trying to move what are they doing with the wheel moving dead animals to ease the transportation so all the people who have come in fresh we are just starting at the very beginning what was the first thing a wheel was used for Who said that? To grind. To grind. Grains. Grain. To make pots. To make pots. To get water out from a well. To get water out from a well. Plowing. Plowing. Chariot. Chariot. Okay. <coughs> Remember, wheels for transport come almost two thousand years later. The wheel was first invented, or first discovered, or first used. to make pots the pottery wheel is the oldest wheel and i think the genius is the people who realize that rather than rotating it this way i can turn the axis around and rotate it this way and then use it for transport just remember the pottery wheel predates other uses of the wheel by almost 2000 years okay before that pottery has existed for 20000 years people used coiling they made a you know like you take atta you can make a long Think thread of it, and you keep wrapping it around to make a pot. The wheel made it much, much easier to make very complex pottery objects. Almost every culture has pottery, and that comes much before wheels for transport. And we'll see why and things like this. So, what is the oldest wheel whose date or you know 
sort of approximate we know how old the wheel is this is a wheel from ljubljana uh, in slovenia uh, it's called the ljubljana marshes wheel this is uh, this is 3100 bc i use bce which is before the current era and ce which is current era ce is the same as ad and bce is the same as bc but that's the preferred terminology these days um doesn't i mean it's the same as what you call bc and ad okay so before the current era is is uh, 3100 years this is a wooden wheel that is the axle on which the wheel was there um and this was uh, you know it was uh, and you can see by the way the wheel is broken already at this point this is probably not the first wheel uh, because uh, this is already made from different parts okay so um now wheels wheels you can do a lot of things with wheels okay wheels are used for a lot of things just think about them i'm just listing something here you uh, you can cut with a wheel you've seen a pizza cutter but most importantly i mean there are diamond tipped wheels for cutting etc wheels are used for storage storing energy this is a 170 ton wheel which is used in the generator it just ramps up slowly and it keeps spinning even if the generator goes off so it has a lot of you know inertia it'll keep turning uh, wheels are used in all satellites for tracking this is called a four reaction wheel uh, the kepler spacecraft for example uh, could not track stars because two of its reaction wheels had failed all spacecraft your chandrayaan mangalyaan whatever they will have these little wheels which are spinning typically four of them Three X Y Z and one in another direction uh, for for tracking uh, boats for a long time were just had till there was a long stick connected to the rudder the person pushed the stick it moved the rudder that's how you steered after a while steering on boats also became connected to a wheel so steering wheels okay cars have steering wheels now um, in a way another thing turning on an axle is good old days there were record players uh, you know so you could store information on these things and then turn it to read it so there are lots of wheels. but today we are restricting ourselves to wheels for transport and where i think there are some very cool physics things happening or science things happening okay so far so good any questions online no no okay so the early wheels the early wheels are all solid wheels okay so here is a sumerian picture of a cart which has solid wheels this is much older estimated around 3000 years before and here you what you see there's a drawing over here and i will put, enlarge that drawing that drawing shows you effectively a cart with four wheels okay and these carts all have solid wheels it's easy to make a solid wheel you have a tree you take a section of a tree make it a bit round you have a wheel okay now this is from the copper age much of the development in wheels happened because people were in mine they wanted to move stuff or copper in particular this is the age of copper and all over the black sea europe etc how do we know this we know this through linguistics we know through finds but we also know what are the words for wheels in different proto indo european languages and from that we can track how these wheels spread and everything and pretty much by the time you come to around 3000 uh, bce all cultures indus valley civilization something most cultures in europe this way in europe asia have wheels used for transport except the mesoamericans okay the mesoamericans is the area of mexico uh, just the north bit of south america etc they had wheels in toys okay they made little toys for their these are made of pottery so whoever is making it made little wheels on their toys but they never used wheels for transport till the spanish invaders or whatever columbus and all those guys came they were pretty much not using wheels for transport and that's because why any guesses ships, ships? no this is a strip of terrain, terrain it's very hilly and mountainous by this time remember that in the rest of the world the horse has been domesticated there is no horse over there some parts of south america have the yama l l a the yama and uh, but that's not really an animal you can harness for you know dra dragging a cart along and they were mountainous areas very narrow things they didn't have use uh, use uh, use wheeled carts so it just happens that that's one area where the wheel comes very late rest of the world discovers the wheel and discovers carts and then of course chariots and everything else you can do once you have horses now the biggest change in wheels is rather than have a solid wheel you saw earlier we had a solid wheel we go to spoke to wheels 
okay and you have definitely seen this a beautiful sculpture of a spoke wheel very very intricately carved of course this is a this is not a real wheel this is a i mean it's a it's it's a stone carving on of its on of a, the the sun temple uh but one of the next big thing in wheel is spoked wheels okay so why put spokes in a wheel that's the next question why put spokes in a wheel online audience again please try and type out your answers in the chat and we'll see something we'll wait for it meanwhile out here why do you want to put spokes in a wheel reduce the overall weight of the wheel it reduces the weight of the wheel excellent and the air pressure will be there so it will be lighter too lighter is weight yeah. air pressure is really i mean and you know for a size of a wheel there's not much difference in air pressure along the wheel it's not so much air pressure flexibility you really want your wheels to be flexible suspension not yet not yet you are you are jumping too much the maintainability becomes much easier maintainability becomes much easier if one spoke breaks you replace only that okay good idea well i mean you make it wide depending on how heavy your thing like a, a road roller has a very wide wheel right yeah so that's a so it's not the width of the wheel Materials. You can use multiple materials. Is very nice. Let me show you the drawing. Drawing of a typical good old spoke wheel. A good old wooden spoke wheel is like this. It's got parts which are called felloes, and there are spokes. The simplest thing. You want a bigger wheel. Trees don't grow. You know, there's a limit to what you can do. Please come. Please come. The easiest way to make a big wheel. is to make these parts you can always get a long part of a, of a of a tree a rod you can get these parts you can bend and make remember this is not one piece this is made with different pieces okay and you have the spoke so you can make larger wheel if you just had a single solid wheel which is basically the cross section of a tree you can't make very big wheel with spokes wheels you can make bigger wheels you can make lighter wheel you can if the, something happens if this spoke breaks you can replace one spoke and a new job came up the wheel right the wheel right was a person who made every village had some people their job is to make wheel okay so that is the big thing the next big thing is wheels is going from spoke to wheels to uh, sorry solid wheels to spoke to wheels theek hai but i think the wheel that we see around us and hopefully how many of you have ridden a cycle okay good you've all ridden cycle right you've seen a cycle is this amazing thing it's called a wire wound spoke wheel okay the cycle wheel the cycle wheel is so fascinating okay you've all seen the cycle wheel yes you came here by cycle that is just so fantastic that is just so fantastic but again just like we see the cycle wheel we see it every day i think we take it for granted so i'm going to ask you a few questions about the cycle wheel okay so i'm going to ask you some questions and of course by the way there is a if you ever want to read anything on cycle wheels there is a book called the bicycle wheel okay this is this book by jobs brand it has everything in it anything and everything you want to know about wheels cycle wheels is there but let me ask you some more things how many spokes are there in a cycle wheel depends how many spokes are there is it the same for the front and back wheel is it the same for the left side and the right side so any any cycle has a drive side okay the side on which the chain is there and there is a little cassette here which has a gear and it it moves the the wheel so there's a non drive side and a drive side typically left side is non drive the chain is usually in the direction you are sitting it's always on the right side okay are the number of spokes the same on this side and this side okay yes they are okay are they same for the front and back wheels yes no yes i you got to go homework now okay <laughs> see you've never seen a wheel carefully okay and uh, the answer is is mostly yes sometimes no 
uh, or it depends on which type of cycle it is. And the other thing which is very interesting in cycle wheels is how do you lace a wheel? Lacing, how do you connect the spokes? Okay. If there are many ways to tie your shoelace, there are many ways you can put spokes on a wheel. And this is what a spoke is like. So I'll pass the spoke around. So I'll just hold it in front. So online audience can see it. A spoke is has a, like it's like a little J. It has a bent thing on one side, and it is threaded on the other side. There are threads, and this thing is called a nipple. The nipple sits in the rim. So in put your spoke through the center over there, and you push it through, and you tighten it. And by tightening this, you can adjust how much tension there is in this in this. Uh, thing okay so if you've never seen what a cycle spoke looks like you can you can pass this around but this is an amazing thing the cycle spoke it's quite thin it's about two millimeters in diameter and uh, so now we have questions on how how do you make these wheels okay so let's see the first thing is how are these wheels cycle wheels different from the good old the bell gadi ka pahia you know the the standard wooden wheel the wooden wheel first thing okay you'll say this has a tire this has a metal sheet around it's a, it has a, they'll make it hot so it expands they'll push it in and it contracts and holds it all together okay so this these wooden blocks this is always under compression it's being squished it's under compression and when this wheel is turning most of the weight is on a few spokes here the modern cycle wheel the spokes are under tension they are not under compression they are under tension so these spokes are all under tension hence you can do with a very light rim the rim is much thinner than in a in a wooden wheel you have very thin rim it's the and there are many of them usually 36 of them that are distributing the load and they are all under tension that's not the only thing so this is the this is the this is the the, the the first main difference between the old compressive wheel and the cycle wheel which is under tension now unlike your you remember your ashoka chakra on the flag there all the spokes or even this one the spokes are radial they are going out from the center to the periphery is a cycle wheel like that no so a cycle wheel is rarely laced in a radial manner it's always what is called semi tangential the spokes are at a tangent to this this is necessary for a wheel which is driven the front wheel of a cycle you could lace like this no problem wheels which are not driven can be laced this way but if you want to transfer power to a you're transferring power typically your your transferring power here and you want to eventually transfer the power to the whole wheel for that you need a certain angle otherwise it's not going to be very effective the wheel is not going to be very strong so you need to have different ways of attaching the spokes to the rim okay now there are many if you look at a typical textbook of cycle wheels and look at the ways you can lace your wheel of course you can do this what is called radial lacing where they are going directly from the center to the uh, periphery okay this is used sometimes for the front wheel which is not which is not very taking a load but usually the spokes are arranged slightly at an angle to this they are not radially outward they are tangential to it and they cross another spoke okay so out here you can see that these spokes cross each other over here these two spokes cross each other okay we are looking at crosses between spokes on the same the outer spokes not a spoke on this side and a spoke on the other side so there is, there is this this one crosses two of them okay so this is a two cross thing similarly you have can have three cross you can have four cross four cross means the fourth there is one cross here one cross here third and the fourth cross is just before over here it cross it one more time so there are there are various ways of lacing a wheel and to all cycles of the same lacing spend some time okay i have learned a lot from rafiq bhai the guy who comes to tfr 
to repair our cycles. He used to have a shop in Army Market, but that closed down. They drove him out of there. But he still comes on the weekends. He comes to TIFR and he fixes all our cycles for us. Go to a cycle shop, a place where it's not really a cycle shop. We can go to a cycle shop, but better still go to a cycle repair one who repairs cycles. Okay, so you you can ask them about spokes and all. They will not know two cross, three cross, etc. The language they use out here is very different. They will say, "Ye eight ka patta hai, six ka patta hai, etc." Two cross is six ka patta, eight cross is is eight uh, ka patta is three cross, four ka patta is patta is is two cross. Okay, so now this is a good old cycle. This is not the BSA SLR kind of lightweight cycle. This is the the standard hero, bada wala those you know. Dudwala bhaiya cycle reinforced with a double uh, bars over here, extra you know strong carrier attached. This is the ekdam tagda cycle. You must have seen these cycles. Yes. Okay. How many folks do these have? The typical this one. This is this is a this is from a, a lightweight. This is the typical the you know the bikes we all rode as students. This has thirty six. You can count it if you want. 18 on this side, 18 on this side. This has 36 spokes. Okay, so and they are under tension. You can, it's like a stretch string. You can if you can pluck it, you can play it. Okay. Now, this guy is slightly different. It has 40 and 32. Okay. Next time. Somebody comes on the cycle, spend a minute, count the spokes. Okay. How do you count spokes without getting lost? Use that, use this, use, use the place where the, the pump, the air is filled, use that as a marker and count with one, two from there. That's it, that you know I've come back to the same place. That's the easiest thing to do. Otherwise, you can use one of these, use this as a marker, use something as a marker that count from there. Otherwise, you'll get lost. So this actually has this actually has um, 40 and 32. We can zoom in a bit at the back. Uh, this is a pattern. This is actually a three cross pattern. In this one. Um, the front wheel is also that way. Let us let me zoom in here because I want to show you also how spokes are how spokes are attached. Okay. So if you zoom in, zoom in there, you can see that this. Remember the spoke has this little J like thing at the end. So if I have a wheel, I can put it from the outside or I can put it from the inside. Okay. And you notice everyone, one is inside, put from the outside in, the other is this way. They go alternately. On, on both sides. Okay. On this side and on that side, they go alternately. Okay. So this is, this is the way you put the spokes on your cycle is not just something you do randomly. And the guys who do it may not understand two cross, four cross, whatever, but they actually know what they are doing. Okay, so this is this is the the hub of your cycle, and this is how you align it. This is actually not very well aligned. You can see there's a gap here, but he can show. Now, so I next ask them is, are the spokes the same on both sides? Na, here you buy only only the same spoke, the same spoke, you just buy the whole set and you put it in and you just tighten it. And then you you just rotate it and you see if the wheel is wobbling. And if the wheel is the wheel will wobble once you put new spokes in it. And you know the spokes aren't tension by the also if if I don't know if you've written a cycle and never had a spoke break, twang, it makes a really you know thing and it's um, uh, so it, it, it and then you see it is shorter than what it was. You can't really join it back. Uh, so it is. It it was stretched. Now, it, out here it is the the, the differences are small, but uh, okay. You can also see kid cycles. Okay, this is a kid cycle with a training wheel over here, and this is a much simpler pattern. This is a two cross pattern, much smaller number of spokes also because the load is not high. Okay. So here you can see this is a this is actually just a two cross. Uh, now there are there are various exotic patterns as well. Okay, there are famous cycle companies. Campagnolo makes something called a triplet, where there are groups of three this way. Uh, today there are very very high tech things which are designed with uh, you know uh, carbon based fibers, and again this is like just a four spoke one. 
people go to some extremes just a sec this is 144 spokes 72 on each side yes in a cycle the question is why do the front and the back wheels have different number of spokes especially for cycles which take a lot of weight like these cycles there is a lot more remember you are sitting here the carrier is here there is a lot more weight on the back wheel the front wheel there is really not much of weight on it the front wheel is there for guiding most of the weight in a cycle is on the back wheel okay that is why so this has 144 spokes and well why 144 why not fill the whole thing up if you've seen cycle racing you will notice that there are cycles which have solid wheels okay there are cycles which typically have one solid wheel which will be the rear wheel and you sometimes get solid, in the olympics you get cycles with two solid wheels allowed for some events if you'll notice cycles with solid wheels are only used for indoor events in a velodrome outdoor events you cannot use a cycle with a solid wheel why rain the air this wheel allows air to go through it these wheels are very sensitive to sideways air current a bit of air you'll find it very difficult to steer so in a velodrome which is controlled indoor at uh, arena you can use such a wheel why would you use such a wheel because this wheel when it rotates generates air there is some air resistance the resistance can be minimized if you have an aerofoil a smooth surface that's why they would use this wheel but it also has a, it's not as stable so there's always a trade off and uh, but but people do use wheels like this yes is it uh, is it just a diaphragm that's on top of that or an inside there no 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 it's a it's a solid it's a solid thing um these are very sort of expensive and special wheels uh okay uh let's move on now cycle wheels come come sit somewhere don't matter come on come on cycle wheels are what are called dish wheels okay especially the wheel at the back the wheel at the back on one side there is this place where the chain has to come the gear cassette okay which means that with respect to the rim the right and the left are not exactly the same and hence the right side spoke is just a teeny bit this is an exaggerated picture but it's just a teeny bit shorter than this one so the left and right spokes are actually not the same you can get away by using a, the same spoke and just tightening it a bit differently on the nipple to adjust by a millimeter or so but the the real real fancy olympic level cyclists will have different spokes for left side and and, and drive side and non drive side in fact this is a pain right you don't have different spokes for this side, this side that side the current trend is actually to make the rim itself asymmetric so these rim this is a symmetric rim it's just a if you look at the cross section of the rim it's just like this like a u okay but many high end cycles now have asymmetric rim that allow your spokes to be symmetric so just the humble cycle wheel there has been a lot of work into it and these are all you know sort of reinventing the wheel basically when people say this okay so uh, remember this and cycle wheels come everywhere mit their first course in material science the first problem you encounter is design of a cycle wheel they actually make you calculate the stresses etc you don't have to do that don't worry on the other side cycle wheels have been used in art modern art if you go to the uh, uh, museum of modern art in new york what is typically called the moma there is a very famous sculpture called bicycle wheel by uh, marcel duchamp or whatever however it's pronounced this is the first example of what was called kinetic art and he is also known for introducing the term ready made which we now use very something but this came from this what is this sculpture it's a stool which has a wheel through it okay and if you can appreciate art you can read what it says uh, he appreciated for its calming effect 
So see the wheel turning was very soothing, very comforting. And he liked to have the idea of a bicycle wheel in his studio. And he enjoyed looking at it uh, as I looking at as I enjoy looking at flames dancing in a fireplace. And it was like having a fireplace in the studio. So if you go to New York, there's this very famous sculpture, just a stool and a wheel in it. As far as I'm concerned, it's a stool and a wheel in it. But this is supposedly one of the the sort of important pieces of art in the world. Okay, modern art. Okay. So uh, Enough of cycle wheels. Any questions on cycle wheels? Yeah, yes. If you go back all the way to the Bullock Cart wheel, where he said folks are not equal strength. Yeah, he's the first. Uh, so, some of, I, I think you mentioned that some of the folks are not as strong or as solid. No, no, no. So, so the thing is this in the amount of stress in every, in, in whether it is this wheel or this wheel is always going to be different okay now initially the wheels are all under tensile stress in this case as you sit on it right some of the depending on on how the wheel is moving some wheels because of your load are going that tensile stress will be reduced but because you're adding to some you're adding weight on it uh, so they might move towards zero stress or something but usually they'll still be very you know i don't think it goes into compressor state because otherwise it will buckle in this one, you cannot put tensile stress, it's always under compressive stress. So more compressive or less compressive, but it's always compressive stress. And um, because it's compressive stress, actually most of the load is taken by the wheels, by the spokes at the bottom. That's all. Okay, that's all. So the moment you rotate it, it will change. It will change. It keeps transferring to different spokes. No, 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 no. It's not that certain spokes are weak and certain spokes are strong. Spoke. No, 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 all spokes are equally strong. Makes right? Of course, I mean, it's wood, so, you know, there might be some. Um, okay. Um, yeah. So, would carriers have benefited from micro So, eventually, chariots did move to thinner spokes and more spokes. And eventually, chariots moved to. You know, metal spokes, once metal things were, uh, yes, indeed. The good old chariots had wood because that's what was available. Remember, you want a big wheel because for one turn, you'll go further. Right? That's why you wanted a big wheel and hence you moved to spoked wheels. And uh, Okay, uh, I think let's continue. <coughs> this we've done. Yeah. Okay, let's turn to a new topic. And this topic is how do you turn? Okay, so um, how do you turn? If you look at old cars, steam engine cars, and even the first petrol engine cars, etc., this has one wheel in front with a rod. It's like a tiller. Okay, this has one wheel in front with a rod. Okay, cycles have one wheel you can turn. Turning one wheel is very easy. Okay. Uh, if you have two wheels, it's a little problem to move on a curve. Okay. If it's one wheel, it's fine. If it's two wheels, the outer wheel has to cover a larger distance than the inner wheel. Right? How do you do this? How do you do this? How do you make the outer wheel cover a larger distance than the inner wheel? If your wheels are, are free to move, so in a bell gadi, it's not a problem. Why? Because the wheels are free to move. One wheel will just turn more time. They're not connected. Okay. Now, the first cars had one wheel drive. They knew this problem. They had only one wheel that was driven. The other wheel was just free. Now, this is okay, but then suppose one part of your road has some water or something and it is slippery, you will not get traction. Two wheels are much better if you can drive both wheels. But if you drive both wheels, then there's a problem of how do you make it turn on this. There's another problem in turning, and that is that when you turn, if I turn, this wheel has to make a slightly larger angle. The inner wheel has to make a slightly larger angle than the outer wheel. Okay, and this was solved by something called Ackerman steering. You can check check this up. Uh, there is 
a guy who in Germany who is not Ackerman. Ackerman is the guy who is the agent who patented it and hence it's known under his name. But he patented this right from horse-drawn carriage itself, this idea that you can turn, you have a mechanism that allows you to turn one wheel slightly more than the other. Okay, in those days still, remember the problem is, uh, I mean, there's no problem for the, the wheels going different distances because there are horse carriages where they're independently rotating wheels, right? Or it's a old car which has only one wheel which is driven by the engine, not both wheels. If you want both wheels to move at different speeds, you need this little thing in the car which is called the differential. The differential is what allows both your wheels to move at different speeds. Okay. And there are lots and lots of cool animations on the net or you and YouTube, etc. Please watch them. I'll give you some of them. Uh, the principle hasn't changed in a long time. It's just a device that decouples the turning of both wheels so that one can turn at a different rate. Otherwise, it will slip. Okay. And um, this is the car we just came in in the morning. If you look from the back, all the cars, trucks, trucks is very easily visible. The, the rod, the thing that connects the wheel at the back, it goes like this and there's a big, like a large thing in the middle where the, actually the drive also comes. So these two things are connected by this little roundish object which you see here. That's the differential. Okay. And what this is, is actually explained very, very well in a nice old 1937 video. Uh, Unfortunately, so this is, they tell you how the outer guy has to go higher. Uh, please take a picture of this. The problem is if I play more than 15 seconds of the video, YouTube will uh, ban this thing also because it will be a copyright violation. So I can't do that. So I cannot play this video actually. I will stop it less than 15 seconds. Uh, but please watch this video. We will watch it later. We'll watch it after the tea break inside here when we are not connected to the net. But if you're on the net, please just take a picture of this QR code. It will point you to the... Uh, video, you can watch it on YouTube. I'm sorry about this, but uh, YouTube is extremely finicky with copyright these days. Oh, fair enough. Uh, so whenever there are videos, I've got some really cool videos, but uh, we'll, we'll watch them later. I can't record it on YouTube at the same time. Okay, so this is a differential. Okay. That works with two wheels. If you can break the connection and make them turn independently, but what do you do in a train? In a train, the rod is connected. There is one axle connecting the two wheels. It's a wheel set. In a wheel set, how do trains turn? I mean, this is near VT. So trains might want to turn when they're changing things or even, you know, this track has a bend, this track has a bend, right? How do trains turn? Yes. Yeah, explain, explain. How do trains turn? Yeah. That is to change track. That's the that's the switching of tracks. Yes. True, true. But suppose take a case where here there's just a bend on the track. There's no. We're coming to that. We're coming to that. Yes. Yes. But this is something you can demonstrate at home. So what I'm going to do is stop sharing. And do a little experiment out here, which is the only experiment we can do for the online audience also, I think. So let us stop share. And I have a, a, somebody, you have to see what, what's going on. because uh, Okay, I can see over here, I think. So I have a little track. Okay. I have a little track and I have wheels. And the wheels of a train are not flat. They are angled. Okay, and the easiest way you can do it is take two paper cups and stick them, either stick them this way so that the, the rims are on the outside or stick them at the rim so that, you know, so in one case, the paper cup is, this thing is thinner at the middle, bigger at the thing. Now, this looks like the obviously stable thing, right? Because even if I put it on a curved surface, it will, it, it, it's, it'll balance itself. Okay, this one is unstable. It's, it's going to be, you know, it's bigger in the middle and smaller at the side. Okay, but let's roll them down a track. So here is a track, which is just two wooden things. Okay, uh, yep, that's a good idea. So I'm going to roll this one down the track. Uh, okay, we need a longer track actually. It worked. It shouldn't have worked. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, you see this? This one 
is not stable on a track, even on a straight track. Let's see this one. This one works fine, right? And you can play with it. Wheels which are angled to be larger outside and smaller inside are not going to be stable. Wheels which are like this, which are smaller on this side, bigger in the middle, will be stable. Okay, this is a very simple experiment you can do at home. And this is at the heart of how, how trains turn. Okay, so let me show the screen again. Um, is the screen shared? No. Okay, so uh, how do you keep the train on the track? The first thing is the train wheel has a little flange. Okay, so it's got a little raised lip at one end. This prevents it from going off the track totally. It can slide back and forth on the track. Okay, but it won't go off the track because of this flange. Okay, now we, we let's do that. We rolled the paper cups. We did this experiment. Uh, if you really want to watch this experiment on YouTube, please take a look at uh, Tadashi Tokaida. He comes on as a special guest on Number File, which is a very, very popular YouTube channel. Uh, just take a picture of this. And he does these coffee cup sliding things to show you how trains turn uh, and explains the mathematics, the stability of it, etc. So the idea is you have a difference in size of your wheel. Your wheel is not the same size everywhere. Some part of the wheel is smaller, some part of the wheel is larger. Now, as the train is going around a turn, automatically the wheels will move such that the one on the outer, just, just imagine that the wheel, do you have two more cups? So instead of having them this, just imagine there are two cups. Two is good enough. There are two cups that are connected like this, but now we have an axle between them. Okay. Now, if so, that these are these two cups with a fixed fixing, and they have to turn at the they, have, they turn at the same rate of rotation. Now, if I'm going this way, I'm taking a turn like this. What will happen? This will tend to move outward, which means this guy is going to be touching the track at a smaller place. This guy, because it's going outward, instead of touching the track in the middle, it's going to touch the track at a little larger radius. So for the same angular distance, because this is touching at a place where the size is, the diameter is larger, this moves a larger distance, this moves a shorter distance, and that's exactly what you want. You want that the, you managed to, uh, the connection got loose. Uh, the online audience can actually continue to see us. I think they are okay. But you guys can't see. So let's just see if we can tweak this a bit. Uh, let me just do a Windows P again. No, no, no. It's just gone to. Just hang on. Just hang on. All right. Are we on again? Yep. Uh, I think you should keep it on top of this so that they can see me. Am I good? Am I in the field? Of you is going to Okay, then just tilt its head up a bit. Oh, we managed it again. Oh, we are pretty good. Okay. Okay. So you get the idea that if the if it turns, the outer wheel automatically goes to a place which is larger in radius and hence covers a greater distance for the same, you know, one turn of the wheel. So on a track, you can do a larger distance out and a smaller distance in. Though, because your wheel size is not the same. That's an amazing thing, right? But it's not so simple. You have to pay the price for it. So by the way, if you, if you, you have, you have uh, Tadashi Tokaida explaining this, there are people way better than me who can explain this. Now this is also gone. 
Uh, oh yeah, I want to click this. Stop the screen share and share it. What's going on? Something is hung. Just hang on. We're going to see if we can fix this. No, it's not looking at Okay, so if you if you don't like my explanation or you don't like Tokaida's explanation, please see Richard Feynman. Doesn't get better than Richard Feynman. Feynman has a very long one hour lecture where he explains things about ha things happening in everyday life. And one of the nicest segments is there about a two and a half minute segment where he explains just using his hands how wheels, how trains turn. Okay, so this is the Feynman on train wheels thing. You can take a picture of this if you want, or you can watch it later. So this is uh, another very good thing. But I said it's not that simple. And uh, also, there is a there is a very nice uh, BBC Engineering Connections documentary that looks at train wheels. And they do exactly the same experiment that we did, uh, except they have a proper track they've used and thing. But now the problem is this. The problem is if you have conical wheels, you will get what are called hunting oscillations. And if you've ever taken a train, you know the train does this. Okay, the train does this because if you have conical wheels, you will, that is what you pay for. Okay, because now you have wheels which are not the same size, so they can, on a straight track also, they will always oscillate a bit. This is the side view, this is the top view. It's going to go this way and your train carriage is going to rock a bit. This is, you can minimize it, you cannot prevent it. Okay, and what do you do with very high speed trains? So uh, there is, uh, you know, how they tackle these issues on a bullet train, etc. There are some beautiful videos. Uh, watch this. Uh, and uh, this is this experiment we did, did it with a, with a cone, with a proper uh, double-sided cone. So um, I, we'll look at these videos uh, later in, in house over here. Uh, now, before we end and have chai and questions, look at wheels around you. Just look. There are so many things you can ask. OK. So in a car, in a, uh, the front and the back wheels look the same. For a small vehicle, this is the a TFR vehicle we came in. Uh, this wheel and this wheel, they're about the same. The front and back wheels are about the same. Okay. Uh, this is not the most uh, thing. The, the, the nicest car I could find was uh, this one. Um, it's, it's a rare car. It's not a, it's a, it's a Lotus. Somebody's got good taste. But you can see the, the, the front wheel and the back wheel are about the same. Uh, by comparing it to the size of the gutter, you can see how small this car is and how low it is. And I don't know how it manages Mumbai roads, but still, the front and the back wheel are the same. Okay. Compare this to a bus or a truck. In a bus or a truck, you will see that's again the TFR bus. This is a BST bus. The front and back wheels do not look the same. Okay, that's the TFR bus, which is the front wheel. That's the front wheel. Okay, this is the back wheel. The back wheel has the front wheel is sort of has what looks like a hubcap. It's not really that, but the back wheel has this. That's because the back wheel is two wheels, two wheels connected together. So they have to have this, which connects the two wheels. So you can't really see the second wheel is very dark behind it, but there's another wheel at the back. So there are two wheels out here. So buses, even this bus, you see this, whenever you see something like this, you know, it's a multiple wheel over there. So buses and trucks have very different uh, wheels. And uh, the question is why? Because the government puts a limit. If your weight of the vehicle is so much, you must have so many axles. You can't put this much load. So 
this was not changed for a very long time though technology had gotten better and roads had gotten better now they finally changed it to 2018 if you have a single axle with a single tire you can take 3 tons per axle that sets the limit of most small trucks single axle with two tires is 7 and a half tons which is why buses and all have two tires at the back they can take much more load there single axle with four tires etc then tandem per axle what you can do etc and by the way just to tell you that the maximum weight uh, for rigid vehicles is 49 tons that's the max you can take on the on a, on by road and on a articulated trailer you can take 55 tons okay so look around look around uh, if you go to a highway you will see uh, you know vehicles of all types um, i think the, the driver who was taking me around was probably not, thought i was not taking pictures of wheels of all the vehicles around me so uh, you can see some of them have double wheels at the back some of them have three sets of wheels some even have axles which you will lower down if you need it when you're empty you don't need it you need it only when it's full so on this one this is up it's in contact with the ground you can put it down when the wheel is thing but sometimes when they put it down it doesn't touch the thing perfectly as you can see in this video just watch this wheel it's not moving or it's moving once in a while it's moving very slowly compared to the other one uh that wheel is not really touching once in a while it moves and it you know maybe a, there's a stone or something that touches it and forces it to move a bit but this is not really a, a it's not really moving they haven't maybe it's empty and they haven't put it up or what i don't know what it is but uh, so there are all kinds of vehicles you see uh especially on indian roads you'll find the whole you know there's there are different kinds of trucks and tempos and whatever else okay now there is a lot happening in the world with people reinventing wheel uh here is a startup company in pune i have no idea what they are doing but they have a wheel that looks cool um uh, it's a wheel which has got integrated suspension built into it according to them um so um this is root 3 it's a company i have no i mean i really have no idea what they do i just found that this wheel looks cool uh so uh, i should move this thing out of the way um there is there is a lot going on in in this area and uh, you know next time when you see wheels just think of all the history think of all that a wheel allows you to do okay and uh, you know uh, do that uh so i'm happy to take questions we can have a chai break and come let's first take questions online questions before we end it and we have lots of experiments for you we have lots of experiments for you to try out because we will still ask you some more questions when you come back because once i have a cycle wheel there's lots of fun stuff i can do with it okay so yeah so are there any questions from the online audience so basically what do you see as a future of wheel um the wheel is here to stay i mean you know you will make as you saw you make modification the wheel to improve you know earlier it was i think the two directions in which wheels will evolve is to improve fuel consumption improve economy right you just imagine the amount of rubber that just is wasted every time it just goes into some powder on the road uh, your tires don't last forever so that's a lot of you know you're using using up resources so things which will in that so more sustainable less fuel consumption uh, maybe integrating different features like integrating a suspension where do you want a wheel with a suspension for example in a wheelchair in a, in a car or something you can always put a suspension right but in a wheelchair you could make a wheelchair much more comfortable if the person uh, wheelchairs are terrible if you have ever, ever had to sit in one uh, uh, you know things like this so there there is there will be improvements in areas the wheel is still got a long way to go any other Tribo electricity be somehow be employed to generate energy from those. Tribo electricity, yes, you can rub things and generate electricity. But very easy. Just remember to generate power. You need to generate voltage and current both. Power is voltage times current. I can rub something and get get a spark. That can be ten thousand volts. But there's no there's very very little current. There's hardly you know pico ampere of current in that. You can't generate useful power. so it's not enough to generate voltage you have to generate voltage and the current and that's not easy with tribal electricity generating voltage is easy and uh, question about are there elliptical wheels used by people are there elliptical wheels uh i mean certainly as gears yes in certain applications 
uh, cams yeah so there are there are certain applications but not the external wheels for transport on a road but internally yes there are there are things where you can use elep elliptical wheel assuming especially a gear is a wheel uh, there is a continuing question how does one select between circular or elliptical well you decide what you want to do what are you doing with your wheel how are you transferring power what are you what is the wheel being used for and then you decide what is the best uh think for it we, if we do a session on gears we will definitely cover, get to this point of the shape of the wheel okay so on that note let's say thank you to the online audience please remember to uh, follow us we are here at prithvi theater and online on the first sundays of the month at ruparel college on the third sundays of the month and if a month has a fifth sunday we will be uh, live from a lab in tifr and the best way to find out is to join the chai and why channel on youtube or to subscribe to us send an email at outreach at tifr.rest.in uh, yes there is another question go ahead uh, it's about the tank wheels it's about the tank wheels which i didn't cover yes what is it if it's a simple one you want to know your take on it oh i mean the idea of a treaded wheel where the wheel is inside inside a, a sort of endless loop um that allows you to go even if there is no good surface for the wheel to go on is the whole idea of threaded wheels where you are going inside a, a this is like a belt uh, which is smooth enough or something that it can travel on the surface doesn't matter what the roughness of the surface below it your wheel doesn't see it because your wheel is inside that's the whole idea of it allows you to go on much rougher terrain uh, than you could with normal wheels and also since there are multiple wheels out there a uh, grip etc is going to be much better for vehicles which are very heavy a tank is probably 70 tons or 100 tons or something so you know uh, but that, that's again a completely different thing okay anything else okay so if not thank you again online audience audience over here don't worry we're not done as yet so uh, you can stop the live stream perhaps um we will take a short break have some chai come back and we'll set up our experiments till then sounds good and then all your questions we will we'll handle all your questions